Hey, this is MJ and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a beautiful striped star stitch blanket. I've used four of these beautiful modern shades. This is Lion Brand Color Theory. So it is a worsted weight yarn. It's 100% acrylic and it's machine washable and dryable. For, so perfect for a blanket. I'll be using two crochet hook sizes for this pattern. So I will be using a 5.5 millimeter for our star stitch pattern and a five millimeter for the border. So the border is just a nice, simple, single crochet in the back loop only stitch. You'll find all of the links in the description box below this video for purchasing the yarn and the hooks. And throughout this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to crochet the gorgeous stitch pattern and I'm also going to show you a little trick that can hide these tails up the side so you don't have all of the ends to weave in. So in the written pattern I've included a chart just it's a fun visual to see how our color pattern works. I also have written out how many rows per color but I'm just gonna work off the chart just to make it a little bit easier as we follow along. So in order to carry tails up the side, I've worked in twos. So we work across the row and we come back so that we're always changing our yarn colors to the right side of the blanket. I'm working with four colors. I'm going to be starting with cream. These colors aren't exactly like the blanket. It's just how my color printer printed them off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just working a smaller swatch rather than crocheting up the entire blanket. So I'm so for this pattern we start with a chain that is worked in a multiple of two plus three. So when working the blanket you're going to chain out a total of 169 but for the purpose of this tutorial I am going to chain out 21, but again, you'll be chaining out 169 for this blanket. So I have a total of 21 chains. You're going to have 169, and we're going to be doing our beginning single crochet five together. So this is going to be our beginning star stitch. And to work the beginning star stitch on our foundation chain, it's going to be worked like this. So we're going to go into the second chain from the hook, pulling up a loop. We're going to pull up a loop now in the next four chains as well. So one, two, three, four. So now you should have six loops on your hook. We're going to yarn over, pulling through all six loops, and I'm going to chain one. Now this chain one creates the eye of the star. Okay, so that's our first, our beginning star stitch, which is a single crochet five together. Now we'll be working our single crochet five together, which is our star stitch. And we're going to start by pulling up a loop in the eye of the star. So we're gonna go through, pulling up a loop. Now we're going to go through the last leg of the loops that you see here. And we're gonna pull up another loop. So the very last one Push your hook through, pull up another loop. Now we're going to pull up a loop in the base of the star. So all of these four loops have been pulled up just by working through that, basically that previous star. Now we're getting to the next two stitches along the chain and we're going to pull up a loop in each of them. So pull up a loop in the next chain, pull up a loop in the next chain, and then you should have six loops on your hook. Yarn over, 
pulling through all the loops and chain one. And we're going to repeat this along our chain till we only have one chain remaining. So through the eye, pull up a loop, through the last leg of the star, pulling up a loop, through the base, pulling up a loop, and the next two chains. You always wanna make sure you have those six loops on your hook to make sure you've done it correctly. Yarn over, pulling through, chain one. So let's work through that again. One more time. You wanna make sure these loops on your hook are not too tight, else you're gonna to struggle to pull through them all. You can take your time, just get the hang of it. Okay, so I'm gonna continue across. I'm going to meet you up for the ending star stitch. So now we'll work our ending star stitch. So we're going to pull up a loop in the eye, in the last leg, in the base, and in the last chain. Okay, so you only have five on your hook this time. Yarn over and pull through all five loops on your hook and chain one to complete your star. So now you can count your star stitches and we'll count the partial one as a full star. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I had 18 stitches plus the three additional stitches for my multiple. So I started with 21, which actually gives us 18 stitches and then my stars are half of that. So I have nine stars. And if you look at the chart that I'm going to do the swatch with you, I have 18 stitches allocated. So now what you're going to do is turn your work and in the eye, of that last star, we're going to work a half double crochet. Just one. And we're still working in the cream. Now in every eye across of the stars, we're going to do two half double crochets. So here is that eye. We're going to place two half double crochets. So these half double crochet stitches are worked on now the wrong side. Our star stitches are on the right side. And you just need to pull your work apart to see the eye. It's that little circle right here. So this row is rather quick. You can whip across it, working your half double crochets. And even the star stitch works up fairly quickly once you get the hang of it. So half double crochets, two in every eye. So they're pretty easy to pick out. You shouldn't have to spend a lot of time looking for them. Here's the last one. And we now also need to add one final half double crochet. So you can see it looks like the top of a stitch right here at the end. I'm gonna place our last half double crochet to that stitch. And if you count your half double crochets across, now I have 18, but if you're working on our full blanket, you're going to have 166. And if we look at the total stars that we had 
for the previous row. I'm sorry I didn't mention that. It was 83 stars for the entire blanket. So now we need to change to our next color. And the next color we will do an additional two rows and it's Himalayan salt that we'll be working with next. So I'm going to change over and I'm going to pull through. Now, just so you know, you will have these beginning tails, of course, to weave in, but the working tail is what we'll carry. So now for row three, we're going to chain three. So this beginning star stitch is worked similar to that foundation beginning star stitch, but we are going to have to work into some stitches along the row as well. So I'm going to turn. Now what I want to make sure that I do is that I work over this tail on that very first stitch. So keep that in mind as you start working. So we're going to go in the second chain from the hook, pulling up a loop. Go through the next chain, pull up a loop. Give this a tug. I'm actually going to grab that tail as well, and I'm just going to hold them here at the back of this stitch. I'm going to go through the stitch, making sure to go under the stitch as well as those two tails. And I'm going to pull up another loop. I'm going to go through the next stitch, pulling up a loop. The next stitch, I'm going to pull up a loop. And now I have six loops on our hook, which is what we want for a star, except for the ending one. So then we can pull through all those loops and chain one. Then we're going to continue with our star stitch pattern. So we're going through the eye, pulling up a loop, through the last leg, pulling up a loop, through the base, pull up a loop, through the next stitch, pull up a loop, through the next stitch, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through all six loops on the hook, chain one. Okay, so this is going to be repetitive from what I've already shown you with the star stitches. So you're going to work the star stitches across until you have one stitch remaining and then we'll be doing that ending star. Okay, so I'm going to work that across and then I'll meet you up for that last one. Okay, so I'm to my last stitch. Okay, and it's kind of tucked in there, but it's make sure you don't miss it. You should have five loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through, and chain one to complete the star. And then we're going to turn, we're going to work back across just like I've already shown you. So it's really just a repeat now. So we're going to yarn over, do a half double crochet in that first eye, and then two half double crochets in each eye across. Okay, see this row is always going to be quick and easy to work across. Okay, so now we're getting to the end. I just like to sort of pull the stitches just so I can see that I see those two loops there and I add my last half double crochet. And what you wanna continue to do, you can make a swatch like this to check your gauge, but the blanket you wanna make sure you're staying at 166 stitches and 83 stars as you work. Cause I know um, people can drop off stitches and you want to make sure that you stay on track with it. So now what we need to do is I'm going to pull this back 
because I'm going to show you again how to hide some tails as you go. You can cut yarn and weave. If you find this tedious and you don't want to carry them, you can skip this. You can cut and weave, but if you really hate weaving tails and you want to take the little extra time just to hide them, this is my little trick for you. So I always like to take whatever tail I'm wanting to carry up and just sort of drape it over my hook before I go through the stitch. Then I'm going to go through the stitch. Okay, now I forgot to yarn over. It's a half double crochet, so I'm yarning over. So then I'm going to drape it. Then I'm going to go through the stitch. Finish my last half double crochet. You can give this a tug, not too much that you get your work distorted, but just that it is taut and then yarn over. Okay, and then what I'm going to do next is pull in my next color, which is going to be the canyon, showing as the dark pink here, but it's actually the deeper sort of rust color that we're going into next. So I'm going to drape this over. Like I say, you're going to have these starting tails always to deal with. I'm gonna pull it through. I'm just gonna tighten it all up, get this tight on my hook. I'm gonna chain three right away to just get it all secure. I'm gonna turn. Now we have some more tails to deal with because we have this tail we have now two colors we're going to be bringing along. So again, this is just a little tip. You can cut your tails, you don't have to do this, but if you really hate weaving them, this is just a little trick I'm gonna show you. So we're going to work this beginning star stitch again. And you could, if you're feeling like it's too much to go over that one, let's just drop off the canyon. But let's give this a little tug again just to tighten that up. But we are going to make sure we're hiding these two tails that we're going to bring along with us. So we're going to go into the second chain from the hook, pulling up a loop. Go in the next chain, pull up a loop. Then we want to make sure we have these two tails here as we go under this stitch and pull up another loop. Just drop them off, pull up another loop, pull up another loop. We wanna make sure we get all six, yarn over, pull through them all, and chain one. Okay, so always as we start bringing in colors at the beginning, you're gonna see we've got tails and stuff to deal with. But then as you work this blanket, we've got 130 rows to go through. So just pulling them along. Now, possibly at our bigger sections, if you don't wanna carry all through where we have um, six rows, you could decide to cut off at that point and rejoin or just keep carrying. It's really up to you how you wanna do it. So this is repetitive. Again, we're gonna work star stitches across. I just wanna make sure I really do cover the changing of the colors and the carrying up the sides so you get the hang of it. And we're gonna make a swatch big enough to show you as well how we're gonna work this border. Okay, so I'm gonna continue across. Okay, so I've come to the end. I'm just gonna keep working through it with you. And this, like I say, this last one's always a little squishy at the end. Five loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through, chain one, and turn. And then we've got our half double crochet row, which is nice and quick. First half double in the eye, half double, two half doubles in each eye across. And 
we're getting that last stitch, but remember we want to continue to pull these tails up to hide them so the pulls aren't so drastic. It's always good to hide them. So we need to yarn over because it's a half double crochet. You want to drape those tails over the hook and then go through the stitch. You know what feels really fiddly? But you can always give them a tug then once you've done that, yarn over, pull through. Okay, and as you can see, you're gonna see these floats basically up the side as you work along. But when we single crochet around to start the border, we're going to tuck these tails into the border so you're not even going to see them so that they're, they're not getting caught or anything like that. So it's a little sneaky little trick, I think, to hide those tails. Now what I'm going to do is two more rows in this color. As you can see, we've got four in total. So I don't need to change color this time. One, two, three, turn and make sure again that you're hiding them on that first stitch as well. Tucking them in as much as possible. I don't like if they have a big long float just because it there's a bigger chance of it getting caught. So as much as we can hide the better and then as we work you see you're just going to have our starting tails to have to deal with. So pulling up a loop in the second chain from the hook, pulling up a loop in the next chain. Then when we get to the first stitch, I always pull the tails up to make sure I go under the stitch and under the tails, pull up the next loop, drop off those tails, just get them right out of the way, pull up a loop, pull up a loop in the next, Got six loops on my hook, yarn over, chain one. And then continue with my star stitch. So now if you're using the exact same yarn and you want to be on track with your yarn usage, and you want to check your gauge and make sure that you're on track. So this pattern, the gauge is, I'm gonna double check it here for you. Um, it's 16 stitches and 10 rows are equal to four inches or eight stars. So if you're counting your half double crochets, you're counting 16 stitches. If you're counting the stars, there's eight stars and there'll be 10 rows equal to four inches with the 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. So that is gonna ensure if you do a little swatch like this, then you can make sure that you are staying on track. Now, 18 stitches is a little short to sometimes measure out. You could always make the swatch a little bit bigger if you wanna get more into the center a measurement. But for the speed of the tutorial, this is a good size to work you through the pattern fairly quickly. So I'm gonna continue now. I'm gonna work my star stitches and then I'm gonna work back in half double crochets. Okay, so I'm coming back along and if we look at the chart, I am going back to the Himalayan salt. So we haven't got to color D yet, but we're going to be able to show you how now we pull up from colors we're already carrying. So I'm getting to the last stitch and I want to yarn over. Okay, I want to. So yarn over, I'm getting the yarn draped over my hook, going under the stitch, pulling up a loop. I'm gonna yarn over and then I'll change the color. So I'm gonna grab the Himalayan salt. Okay, give everything a tug. I'm gonna chain three. 
and I'm going to turn. And now I'll be carrying these two colors. And at, at one point, we're going to be carrying three colors because we have the four. We just haven't got to that stage yet. Okay, so it is going to be a little bit that we're, we're carrying up the side, but if you hate weaving tails, then follow this method. Okay, and then I'm going to pull these tails over as I pull up a loop in that first stitch. Okay, I'm gonna drop off my tails Pull up a loop, pull up a loop, yarn over, chain one. And then I'm going to continue. So I'm going to go across, I'm going to come back, and at this point I'm going to show you next how to do the border. I'm not going to continue, keep going, because it really is just repetitive. Once you have that trick down for carrying the tails, you should be good to go. Okay, so you can pull this up and crochet over it, but I'm just finishing this off now. So I'm just going to leave it, I'm gonna yarn over, and at this point, when you finish your blanket, I'm going to fasten off all the tails. Then you can take the time to weave in any tails that you have. If you have chosen to cut them all, then you want to weave all of your tails in. And then turn your blanket so that it's the right side facing. I'm not going to worry about my tails here for now. I'm just going to move on to showing you how to do the border. So as the blanket um, stands, you use for the actual color pattern throughout you're going to need three balls of each color i've chosen to go with the canyon for my border but if you wanted to do a different color just get an extra ball in that color or swap out how you do a b c d to make sure that your color c has the extra ball of yarn so that you're covered to do the border So what we're going to do at this point, I am going to change over to my smaller hook for the border. Take a slip knot, put it on my hook, and I'm going to come up to that top right hand corner. We're going to find the first stitch because this tail isn't woven in. It's going to probably pull a little bit when I try to do this. That's why weaving the tails is a good idea. Let me get in here. I'm going to pull through with the slip stitch, chain one, and I'm going to single crochet across. Maybe I'll just go over those tails, tuck them in. So you're going to single crochet across, and you will be single crocheting across a total of 166. Okay, so now what you're going to do at the corner, you're going to chain one, and then you're going to place another stitch in the corner. Then you're going to evenly work stitches down the side. So this first stitch is gonna count as one stitch along the side, because how you can figure out the number of stitches you need is you're going to do three stitches per um, two rows. So it's pretty easy to see our rows, like this is two rows, this is two rows, this is four all together. So I always just count as I'm going through my two rows to make sure I'm getting three. So there's one, two, three, then coming over to this section, we're going to have finding a good place to put your hook can always be a little bit tricky. One, two, 
three, and then my next two rows, one, two, three, and so on. So just keep working. Take a lot longer when you're working across the blanket. And then this last stitch will count as part of my corner. So I'm going to chain one. And then as I turn to work across the bottom, this will be 166 stitches as well. The first stitch will count as the corner stitch. So I'm going to work that across and at our corner we'll chain one and then continue up the side. So this is where you really need to make sure that you're crocheting over your floats that are along the side. So that's one, two, three. So as I go through here, I'm going to make sure that they're going up on top of my hook when I work this single crochet. So this first section is a little bit tricky to make sure that you hide all the floats but once we get this round done and you take the time just to make sure you're covering them all so always when you push your hook through just make sure you're getting those tucked into the stitch Okay, and then we're going to finish the chain one and slip stitch into our first single crochet to join. Now, I'm just gonna do a regular one right here, but as we work around, we could do a reverse slip stitch and it just helps kind of hide that join as well a little bit. So I have worked a total of four rounds for my border, which gives us about a one inch border. Now, if you want to do the border uh, thicker than that, you can. You just will need probably a little bit more yarn or see what you have left over as to how much you can do if you want it a bit thicker. And the border is really simple. We're just going to work single crochets in the back loop only now. And whenever you get to the chain one spaces at the corners, you're going to work a single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So let's work across to our first corner together. Making sure you keep the chain ones loose is going to help you identify it. You can always add a stitch marker if that helps, just to make sure you're working into the right space. And also count your stitches whatever you find the easiest okay so here is my chain one space I'm going to single crochet chain one single crochet and then I'm going to continue in working single crochets in the back loop only around. So this is my second round. I'm going to do this for four rounds.
but I'm going to continue working that around and I'll meet you back up at the joint. Okay, so at our final corner, it's single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And then I'm going to reverse slip stitch to join. So what I'm going to do is hold my yarn to the front of my crochet hook. I'm going to go front or sorry, back to front through the stitch, yarning under, pull through, twisting the hook away. Make sure you get the loops pulled up on your hook and then pull through to slip stitch. Chain one and then just continue working around in this manner. So once you finish, you have this beautiful border. It looks great. And then the final step is going to be to block your blanket and that's really gonna give it its perfect shape. So you can just submerge the blanket into some lukewarm water with a little bit of dish soap, baby soap, or wool wash, which I have linked on the blog and in the pattern, and then allow that to just soak for around 25 minutes. Take it out, remove any excess water, wrap it in a towel, that always helps, and then you can block it out to measurements. And that's just really going to give your blanket that nice finished look. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Make sure to check the description box below this video for all the links. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day. Mm -hmm.